Hello. So I thought I'd give you something a little bit different, you know, in the world of online content. Um, I'm going to give you the story behind the song Look But Don't Touch, which was the first single off the Skin album. Um, and it goes like this. <laughs> Now this is a song that I wrote about a girl called Jeannie. Uh, she was from California and she was one of the glow girls, which is the glamorous ladies of wrestling. And so in the like the early 90s, they, they were kind of like a, a big deal. And I can't really put into words how hot this girl was and I, was, I had a huge crush on her. And we used to hang out and I got out, I got as far as hanging out with her in her hotel room but that is as far as it went. And so that's where the song Look But Don't Touch came from. She had a boyfriend who was the bass player in Quiet Riot. Um, I don't know his name. I only ever referred to him as Prick. But um, then we hooked up again in, in LA and it was the same deal, Look But Don't Touch. Uh, but that's who the song was about. Um, but there's another part of this story because when we were, even before we were called Skin, we were called Taste, and we were working with Bruce Dickinson from Iron Maiden. And we were working with him on Elected, which is a song that was used on Comic Relief. And so Bruce would come down to rehearsals, um, and we would be running through our set, and when we finished, he would get up with us and we would play. But... Um, now, now, Bruce is a smart guy, by far the smartest musician I've ever worked with. Uh, prolific. I remember writing three songs with him once in one day. And not, not little bits, kind of like 70-80% of a song. Um, incredibly talented guy and obviously one of the most successful singers of all time in one of the most successful bands. So if you're going to listen to someone in, in the music world, then Bruce would definitely be one of them that I would pick. So we were playing the songs and he would just sit there and listen very intently. And then when we finished playing Look But Don't Touch, he looked up and he said, that's, that's your best song. That should be your first single. And we were kind of like, oh, wow, okay, well, he, if, he's, if he says it's a great song, then it must be a great song. So then moving forward, we then got signed and we made our album and it was through Parlophone Records. And we were due to go on tour with Little Angels. And this big meeting was kind of organized where we were going to discuss the release of the first single. And the head of the label, which is a guy called Andrew Pryor, he came in with his guys and presented all this artwork. And the first single was going to be Night Song, which is another song from the record. And I just looked at it and went, but this is the wrong song. Why have you, why have you picked the wrong song? You know, and I could tell that he was obviously angry that... Uh, that I had questioned his decision making. Um, at which point he stood up and said words to the effect of, you should not be telling us how to run a record label. And at which point in my head, I instantly thought, well, you shouldn't be fucking talking to me like that. You know, which has always been a problem for me in life is I've never really held back if I've got something to say. There's pros and cons to this. Um, you know, but it's not, I'm not going to fear anyone within the music industry. You know, when you spend 30 years being punched and kicked, kicked in martial arts, you're not going to fear the consequences of, you know, some record company executive. You know, so I instantly stood my ground and basically said, well, you're, you're making the wrong decision, um, which infuriated in him even more. Um, Rod Smallwood, who is also an incredibly ferocious individual, um, was looking at me as if to go, where are you going with this? Um, at which point I said, well, Bruce Dickinson, the singer for Maya Maiden, thinks that this should be the first single. I said, and would you be arguing with him in the same way that you're arguing with me? Obviously, this didn't go down very well. Um, and Rod, my manager, to his credit, kind of diffused the, the subject and started talking about launch of the album and 
various other bits and pieces and it all kind of got settled down. Um, and then when the meeting had finished, then we went outside and I said, Rod, you cannot let Night Song be, first, be the first single. It has to be Look Without Touch. And he just looked at me and went, all right, I'll sort it. And lo and behold, he did sort it. And it was basically the first song. And it's the song that everyone knows. And it's the song that people still remember the most from, from Skin Day. So the point of this story is if you're a musician and you feel 100% strongly about something, don't let anyone else deviate you from that, from that belief. You know, trust your gut instinct. And there'll be lots of people that will try and make you do things that you don't want to do. And if you're going to survive within this industry, you're going to have to learn to stand your ground. Um, take the arrows, take the punches, but your belief will see you through. Okay, so hopefully that was entertaining, and maybe it wasn't. Uh, either way, there it is. Take care.